Right now, Congressman Steve Cohn of Tennessee is joining us. He's a member of the Judiciary Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. One uh, of the most significant questions you hope uh, the Mueller report uh, will answer. Well, I hope it would answer whether there was, in fact, uh, a activities between the Trump campaign and or Trump uh, and, and the Russians in, in involved with our 2016 election. That's the issue that Bob Mueller was to report on. Uh, and whether there was a conspiracy, whether there was aiding and abetting. And, and you know, the Trump Tower meeting, uh, how he deals with that, how he explains the, the, that meeting, if, it, if there's not uh, the, the factors that lead up to a possible uh, indictable type offense. Now, Mueller's a team player. He's going to abide by Justice Department regulations that say you cannot indict a sitting president. But there might be something in there saying that he would, if there were not those regulations, or that there was proof but not sufficient proof to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. So I'm looking forward to how he deals with the Trump Tower meeting and with Roger Stone's contacts with uh, uh, Assange or uh, WikiLeaks and, and why, how he deals with Manafort passing off the poll data uh, to, to, the, to the Russian Kalimnikov. As you so know, there's a lot to be seen there. Yeah. I was going to say, as you know, uh, Congressman, the White House believes that the lack of additional indictments and the Justice Department says there will be no more indictments coming from the Mueller, uh, the special counsel's team. They believe that's a signal that the report will vindicate the president of the United States. Uh, but in publicly available court filings, Mueller has already laid out some evidence of contacts, as you point out, between the Trump team and Russians. You're talking about the Trump Tower meeting. Do you believe this report will weave together that information into a narrative at least the narrative that points to some sort of collusion, even if their behavior wasn't something Mueller could charge. I, 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 we'll have to see what it says, but it certainly could. The fact is, Justice Department regulations say, and, and Bill, Bill Barr has made it a point, no, everybody else has too before him, that they were going to abide by those regulations or policies and not look to uh, uh, change them, that you cannot indict a sitting president. So there's not going to be an indictment of of, of Trump, but there might be information that if he was, if that policy wasn't in effect, that he would have been indicted. You know, the main thing you look to, how many times, and we've thousands of times, Trump has come out and said, this is a witch hunt. You know, Richard Nixon said it was a witch hunt in July of 1973, and that it was a total witch hunt, political witch hunt to get him. This is the defense of somebody who's guilty, not an innocent man. Shakespeare said, the lady doth protest too much. Trump is the lady. But let me just point out, uh, uh, you refer to that Trump Tower meeting in New York City. Uh, the Justice Department guidelines, you're correct, they can't indict a sitting president, but they can indict senior aides to a president. And clearly, since there's not going to be any more indictments coming from the special counsel's team, uh, the uh, others who participated in that meeting, they're not about to be indicted. The president's son-in-law for example, Jared Kushner, he was there. He's not going to be indicted. Uh, the president's uh, son, Donald Trump Jr., he's not going to be indicted. What does that say? Well, that, that is good news for the president and his team. It says that they didn't have sufficient proof or there wasn't proof that, that they knew going into it what the meeting was about or that the meeting, uh, I don't think anybody believes it was about adoptions. The president wrote that excuse for his sons. It was about getting dirt on Hillary Clinton. But maybe they didn't follow up on it afterwards. Maybe they just got the information. They should have called the FBI. That was a misdeed, but it wasn't a criminal offense. And that may be what it was, too. But it's almost like, you know, in a game, like Bryce Harper hitting a homer for the Phillies in the bottom of the eighth when they're trailing the Nats by eight runs. It, you, the Philly fans would cheer, but it's just a, kind of a drop in the bucket. Sure. <laughs> I understand the, uh, the, the comparison. Uh, your uh, committee, uh, the Judiciary Committee, should you subpoena Robert Mueller? Hello? To t can you hear me? Can I you can't hear anymore. All right, well. I got you now. All right. Should your committee. I can hear you. Should your committee go ahead and subpoena Robert right. Mueller to testify before the Judiciary Committee and provide answers? I do, uh, there's no question we should, and I'm sure um, Chairman Aller said he that we would, and I look forward to his testimony. There could be things that he, uh, places he wanted to go, and maybe he was quietly asked to, to wind the, the investigation down. Uh, it's maybe coincidental, but it's, it's interesting that it's within a month of, of Bill Barr being appointed that the investigation is closing. And, and you know, there was all the subpoenas and, and arguments in the courts going all the way to the circuit. Uh, appellate court where they were successful in getting some documents from some foreign 
uh, financial institution, I believe it was, or foreign corporation, and they were fighting over records. And I can't believe they just said, well, let's forget it. We're going to win that, but we don't need the records. Either somebody else has that uh, passed to them to work on that particular case, whatever it was, or the, the investigation was shut well, down. Well, uh, before I let you go, Congressman, are you raising questions about Robert Mueller's integrity? No, I wouldn't raise questions about his integrity, but he does work for the Attorney General, and he might have been, might have been quietly suggested that it's time for this to end. Well, that would raise questions about his integrity. No, I don't think it does. I think he has no choice but to end it. He can't, he can't go rogue. Uh, Robert Mueller's a great American and a great uh, patriot, and he's done a great job, and I have nothing but the highest respect for him. All right. Congressman Steve Cohen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm sorry if I lost you with Bryce. It's all right. <laughs> you didn't lose me. I understand fully the analogy. All right. The breaking news continues here.